Hey, son. Hey, dad. How's it going? Oh, it's going pretty well. It's good morning. It's beautiful out. Hey, you know, I got to tell you the, do you, do you know what the number one thing is that I hear consistently from clients for the last couple of decades of consulting work? What's that? I love meetings. Mm. I, I want to be in more meetings. I want to spend way more time in meetings. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be uh, I want to spend time reading really dense PowerPoints or have the presenter read them to me. Right. And I want to have like mostly no direction to it going in. And so oh, yeah. we kind of just like see what happens. And I want as many people involved as possible. Absolutely. Like the more people in the meeting, the better and the more productive they are. Absolutely. And and I really like that part where you just spin around on decisions and you spin and you spin and you don't actually make a decision. So you have to come back the next week and keep working on it. Yeah. And I definitely love meetings that have no food. Oh, yeah. That's the best. Yeah. This sounds like a stupid question. Probably is, because, yeah, go ahead. Skilled managers equals high morale, which equals all that cool stuff that you cannot pay for and you can't punish for. When you close off that feedback channel, you are not going to be able to hear the truth. In the first microseconds, your brain can't tell the difference between physical danger and what we call social danger. I'm, I'm pissed off at you. Oh, me, specifically? Well, you know, just because you're my boss and all. Employees tend to get promoted until they reach their level of incompetence. Go forward and don't suck. Greetings, earthlings. <laughs> hey, Ethan. Hey, Mike, a.k.a dad yes son welcome back to another episode of the managing with mind and heart podcast where our goal is to help you managers leaders it's aspiring managers and leaders and all the above and all the above we want to help you succeed not suck at managing right and so we're here to give you the tools necessary Boy, we just got done with a with a long series on behavior styles. Mm -hmm. I think we're all behavior styled out, and we're ready to get back to some of the nuts and bolts. That's it. Let's do it. Today, as well as probably the next episode, we are going to be discussing how to run meetings that don't suck the soul out of you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, our belief at Nash Consulting, and, and this is from, again, a couple decades of experience, we believe that meetings in many ways are a microcosm of the culture, the work culture. Hmm. Microcosm of the culture. Yeah. Like, like if, if we, I, I, when I was first actually getting into this work, I did a lot of meeting observation. When, actually, when I was doing my master's thesis, I was, I was in like a fly on the wall, just watching meetings at a couple different organizations. Did they know you were there? <laughs> yeah, I was hiding under the table. It was, <laughs> it was, it was double mirror. It was kind of creepy. Right. Yeah, but it was but it was cool because I was tracking things like it was actually mind numbingly boring. I got to be honest with you, but I was tracking things like how much time people spent spinning on decisions. Uh, you know how long it took to make a decision. We tracked airtime and how people mm -hmm. were using airtime. We we I was certainly interested in how meetings were run, how they were organized, and something I've just seen over and over again then and since then is that the culture of the organization just like literally shows up right there in that meeting. You, I see. you can watch a meeting and know so much about what uh, kind of the health of that organization. Cause you see things like um, you see respect or lack thereof. You see decision-making processes, you see efficiencies or lack thereof. You see how people use airtime. Mm. Um, you see the, the, the collegiality, is that the word? Collegiality. collegiality. Yeah. You see how they collaborate. Um, it's right there. And then when you get into the organization beyond the meeting, you're like, oh, yeah, it, it's, it, it, that's all happening. Right? I see. So it's kind of like a, a manifestation of the broader culture. Yes. Do this, yes. Do this meeting. Yes. And that, that, that's good news in two ways. Number one, as a consultant, I can, you know, I collect a lot of data right there. I can, I can know a lot about that organization by watching a meeting. And then here's the cool thing you can in many ways reverse engineer mm -hmm. the culture. Like if you improve meetings, and I have seen this, in fact, I'm working with a client right now, we're right in the middle of this. You, you can uh, clean up those meetings and add some best practices. Those then leak into the culture. You actually see those things that you fixed or that you've improved in the meetings um, become a part of the culture brought in a, in a broad way, which is, uh, it's fun. It's fun for us to kind of see that reverse engineering happening in real time. 
I see. And so as you were doing all these meeting observations, and I know you, you still do them to this day, what were the main factors that led to a good meeting and which I would imagine would also indicate in a lot of cases a healthy culture? Yeah, good question. Um, <clears throat> let's let's maybe talk through some of these things. Um, First off, yeah, I'm going to pause here. Okay, pause. Change subjects real quickly. Of course. Folks, we would like you all, all our listeners out there, to let us know what topics you would like us to cover. I know this is an extremely awkward place to put this That was a really in. abrupt change of subject. Oh, yeah. Dude. You know, I just kind of go with it. Um, no, honestly, we kind of have our own subjects, but we want to hear about what topics you would like to see us cover on this podcast, and we'll cover them. Also, just any maybe situations you're dealing with the workplace um, that you would like to see kind of, you know, how we might handle it. We want to hear those things, and we have, want to have episodes just based on that. So if you're a listener out there, well, of course, they're a listener out there. How else would they be hearing this message? <sighs> Good point. Okay, go ahead. Anyways, shoot us an email. Contact at nashconsulting.com. Contact at nashconsulting.com. Let us know what you'd like us to cover, and we'll get on that. Good. Okay. Hey, hey I have a quick change of subject, too. Okay. I started playing poker last week. Yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Monday, we, Monday we talked po- about that on the last podcast no. episode. Did we? <laughs> yeah, we did. That's Apparently, you're pretty excited about <laughs> it. Really, I, it's really embarrassing. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, you know, I love the, the excitement, the passion that you found, this new, this new passion that's just brought you alive in the world. We, we just made that podcast like a couple days ago, and I forgot that we talked about that. You're right. I'm kind of excited about poker, so yeah. let's move on. <laughs> okay. Whatever. Anyways. Whatever. So as we were saying... We are going to spend the next two episodes of kind of diving into what makes effective meetings effective. What if we talked about your call, bud? But what if we talked about what makes meetings suck at first before we, we get into what, what makes, makes meetings, meetings great? Yeah, let's talk about what makes them suck. And I'll tell you what, just kind of looking at some of the research out there on bad meetings and inefficient meetings, there was one study that found that, and actually did, um, you know, observed meetings and did interviews with over 6,500 professionals in the US, UK, Germany. They found that cost of poorly organized meetings in 2019 reached estimate of 399 billion in the US. What? Wait. And 58 billion in the UK. The cost of poorly organized meetings. Okay. Now, so that, that was a study done by um, a scheduling app website called Doodle that we use. So that's just the cost of inefficient meetings. Furthermore, poorly organized meetings mean I don't have enough time to do the rest of my work. Oh, 44, my yes. 44% of people said that. Um, they also said that unclear actions lead to confusions in meeting. 43 mm-hmm. people said that. 43%. 43%, yes. Um, and then bad organization results in a loss of focus on projects at, from meetings. 38%. Oh, you've just described what I am seeing across the board. And let me tell you one more thing. The average business meeting runs about one hour. Okay. So that doesn't surprise me. It probably doesn't surprise a lot of people out there. I mean, we may argue that that might be too long in a lot of cases. Um, last thing, a poll done by salary.com, 47% of people said too many meetings was the top time waster in the office. Yep. Half the people Agree. That's the top time waster in office. So, boom. That's boom. That's how meetings suck. Let's, but why? Yeah. Let's let's stay on that. And and I, I'm a real nerd when it comes to consulting because this topic right here actually gets me pretty excited. I can tell. I, I love me. I love talking about meetings. And I and I I don't. I guess I don't want to repeat everything I've just said. But because they're so powerful in uh, helping a organization get healthier because everything you just said speaks to what I said, right? If you could fix all that, people have more time, things are more efficient, decisions get made, I have more time to do my job. At the same time, uh, meetings really matter. I I just want to throw this in. They're not inherently bad. No, because in many ways, they're- (laughs) Bad meetings are inherently bad. Yes, bad meetings are bad. But but meetings themselves, if they're done well, are actually in some ways the heart of the organization. This is where people gather. This is where they collaborate. This is where decisions get made. This is where um, creativity happens. This is where, I mean, there's so many important things that happen in meetings that aren't going to happen if you don't have meetings. So 
you know, I've worked with a couple of organizations and their answer was, let's just stop having meetings. And there's no way you can run a healthy me- an organization without meetings. So this is a, to me, this is an exciting topic because it, um, it's, so, it, it's so possible to see organizations thrive if you work on meetings. So what you just said, I got I to gotta say, I've, I've done my own very informal <laughs> quotes around the word research. Uh, in, in trainings, I ask the participants to show me their hands, you know, the number of fingers. I, I ask for ratings a lot. Mm-hmm. And w- one, of the, uh, one of the questions I always ask is um, uh, about the volume of meetings that they're experiencing and how that's impacting their ability to get their job done. Okay. And so I'll ask people, I'll say, can a scale of one to five, five represents I'm in so many meetings, I, I cannot get my job done. Mm-hmm. And, and, and one would represent um, it's the exact right amount of meetings. They are only helpful. They don't, dis- they don't detract from my ability to get my job done. That's the scale. I'm, say, I'm guessing that the average I'm getting is four. Four. A, across the board, at over and over and over and over wow. again. I look around the room, and it's not a lot of ones, twos, and threes. It's a lot of threes, fours, and fives. So most people have the feeling that meetings in the workplace kind of suck. Vast majority. It, mm. I, I, I hear that all the time. They not just they, only, they, don't, they don't just suck, but they're they the, the meetings themselves are making it a, are a roadblock to them getting their job done effectively. Right. Well, that's definitely on par with what some of the more official studies have found as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's been lots of research into this as of lately because I think that people are frustrated. Yeah, they really are. (laughs) Again, people are finding that it's taking away from their job and their responsibilities and work's getting pushed onto the weekends or into the the evenings because the days are filled with meetings. Yeah, yeah. And and in the workplace, they're now taking your lunch time, right? We don't, you know, we don't have time to meet, so let's meet over lunch. So now you're losing your lunch. You know, the, uh, as you just described with weekends and evenings, meetings create a work-life balance problem. People are getting burned out. People are going home frustrated. So, okay, so we've described the, the mess, right? Let, you, let, we probably don't want to spend too much time just knocking meetings. You right. wanna, how about if we start fixing meetings? What do you think? Are we ready for that? Ready to fix some? Well, we could bitch and moan a little more. I kind of like the bitching and moaning part. All right. That's so, fun. So, oh, so what else do you not like about meetings? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Let's move on. All right. All right. Where do we start? Um, uh, well, let's start where are we starting in our trainings. Um, mm-hmm. if, we were, if we were doing a training workshop right now, we'd be asking the small groups to be brainstorming all the ingredients of effective and enjoyable, me- enjoyable meetings. And it's really cool, right? We get a whole bunch of people in a room and they sit there and they start you know, sort of engineering, what would make meetings awesome? <laughs> what do they want? What do they want to see more of or less of? Okay. So what I think we should do now is let's break down or brainstorm all the ingredients that we can think of for an effective and enjoyable meetings. Right. And let's kind of list them. We might say a few things about each one, but we'll come back and visit each one of these items that we've brainstormed and kind of uh, dig into it. Flesh them out a little bit more. But let's just start with kind of a list of all the ingredients in effective, enjoyable meetings. Yep. So first one, um, I it which seems obvious to me, but maybe not to others, is the facilitator. Yeah. Right? It, it, you would think it was obvious, right? Like every meeting needs to have a good facilitator. Um, I, te- I can't tell you how many times I go in organizations and they are trying to run meetings without facilitators. Mm. And, you know, if I have to pick two things that are going to make a meeting really, really work, it's the facilitator skills and it's the agenda. Mm. So facilitation is key. We spend a fair amount of time training facilitators on how to facilitate. This is the person that's going to air traffic control, that's going to lead us into a decision, that's going to deal with difficult behaviors. And so bottom line for me, guys, is organizations... You need to invest some time and probably some money in getting all your meeting facilitators trained. It's, it's kind of like the old Peter principle, right? People get promoted till they, till they reach their level of incompetence. You know, welcome to management. Good luck. You know, welcome to meetings. Welcome to facilitation. Good luck. You're supposed to have all these skills, which the average person doesn't have all these skills. Right. Right. So that's, that's number one for a for, uh, facilitator for me is spend some time getting your facilitators up to speed because that is going to be probably the number one key to running effective and efficient and enjoyable meetings. Yeah, you definitely need someone there to, to guide people through the meeting. Absolutely. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely spend some time on facilitator. Yep. Um, that's a big piece right there. And then you mentioned yep. in that same uh, paragraph, agendas. Absolutely. Yeah, agendas. Agendas. Um, you know, the, the frustration, and I, and I bet you the listeners out there can, can relate to this. How many times have you gone to a meeting 
and there's an agenda even, and you never get through it. It's it's a list of all the things you hope to talk about, and you never get through it. And no one is there traffic controlling the meeting, and no one's timekeeping. And uh. you're like, oh, okay, we didn't get to these last five things. And some of those mattered, and some weren't so important. It's just a mess. So I get it. It's not just you can't. It's not just the formality of having an agenda, but you actually have to follow it Ooh. and use it. Ooh, yeah. I was just told to have an agenda. <laughs> yeah, right. And I check that box. Yeah. No, mind blown. Right. You got you got to have. Let's start with an effective agenda, which we'll, we'll circle back to this later. Right. An agenda that really is reasonable, that has time frames on it. Certainly. You've you've added up the. You know, you, you looked at your hour and you said this is how much time we have for this item. Um, you, this, of course, uh, is is the facilitator's job then to use that agenda and stick with it. And you know, it's it's a it's a dance between again the facilitator, the agenda, and the group. Mm-hmm. So it's really important that agenda works. Yeah, you know, the agenda really is the the compass for the meeting, right? So if you start to get off track, it's going back to the agenda and, and recognizing, hey, we have these things that we need to cover. Yeah, so. yeah. And well, and the other, the agenda also, and we'll we'll move on here, but the agenda also is going to have on it all the ingredients of a good meeting. It's a, it's this template agenda that reminds you to do all these things we're about to talk about. So super helpful, super important. Oh, side note, there's lots of kinds of meetings, right? Uh, just make sure we're, we're clear on this. We're not, not right now, we're not probably talking about the, you know, the ad hoc, hey, let's the two of us get together and have a quick meeting about something. We're not talking about lots of types of meetings. We're talking about your, you know, your staff meeting, your your weekly group meeting, your project meeting that meets monthly. Mm -hmm. You know, we're talking about probably standing regular meetings. Sure. And hopefully we can get into talking about maybe a little bit like what type of meetings you should have and shouldn't be having. Good point. Um, Because, you know, you can run the most effective meetings in the world, but if you still have too many meetings that aren't necessary, you know, you're still going to have a problem. Exactly. They, they, They could all be great meetings, but you have no time to call your clients or do your other work. Right. So what else? What are, what are some other effective or some ingredients of effective meetings? Well, there's, you know, we certainly could talk about some logistical stuff like time, how long they should last, where they should, uh, what, what, what part of the week. Um, so logistics. Logistics, the room. Um, wouldn't it be nice if you got to a meeting and the AV stuff was actually working already and you didn't have to sit there and watch the facilitator struggle with the AV equipment for 10 minutes? Yeah, and whose world? <laughs> right. Um, how about how about just a, a commitment to starting and ending a meeting on time, mm. um, and that leads into things like passing period, right? How many time how many times are you in a meeting that ends at ten o'clock, and you're also scheduled for a meeting that starts at ten o'clock, and you're supposed to you know teleport yourself instantly, right? And you don't have to pee, and you don't have to eat, <laughs> and you don't have to make a phone call, and so what that creates is this crazy domino effect where everybody's late for meetings and it then becomes the culture of that organization for everybody to be late to everything. Mm-hmm. And so nobody can count on a start time right. because the end times aren't working. Yeah, it's irrelevant at that point. You know, not, there's nothing more frustrating than a meeting that's supposed to start at 10 a.m. and it always starts 10 minutes after. Yep. And then w- when I get used to that, you know what I start doing? Arriving 10 minutes after. Exactly. Now it starts 15 minutes after. <laughs> exactly. And then the meeting ends late. And, and this is an interesting piece. Um, I'm sitting there in the meeting and you're, you know, you're the boss and you've got a power differential and I'm the employee and you're saying to me at nine o'clock, hey, you guys mind if we go an extra 15 minutes? And I have to have enough courage to say no, because I actually have a one-on-one with my employee in five minutes. Right. But I'm going to just sit here through this meeting and I'm going to just not say anything and I'm now going to, you know, shaft my employee. Right. It, yeah. It's a domino effect. Right. And especially if you're you're the manager in that position saying, hey, is everybody okay? Everybody's okay, right? If we right. got all the yeah. 15 minutes. Okay, that's called using your power differential in a fairly unhealthy way. Right. You know, who's going to say, no, actually, that's not okay, even though you've said it's all okay, right? Right. So, yep. Um, yep. anyways, another thing I had thought of is meetings with only the essential people. Uh, right? uh, appropriate attendees. Appropriate attendees. There, I just said there's nothing more frustrating than a meeting that always starts 10 minutes late. I retract that. There's nothing <laughs> more frustrating than a meeting that starts 10 minutes late and it's just full of 20 people and half of them don't really need to be there at that moment. And I'm one of those people that don't need to be there at that moment. 
yeah, that yeah. can be frustrating. Well, let's let's take a couple minutes on that. So we we have that where where I'm not I don't need to be here right now. So what am I going to do? While I'm sitting here during the irrelevant part of the meeting for me, uh-huh. I'm going to get out my computer. <laughs> right. I'm going to start working on stuff. Well, hopefully that's a ingredient that we can throw in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but this is what happens. You got the person who I mean, I was working with an agency a couple months ago and this woman told me I go to this one particular meeting every, I think it's every week. She goes, I, uh, I often have a 15 minute piece in that meeting that I need to be there for, but I don't know when it is. So I'm there for the whole meeting. W- w- I can't get my regular job done. So of course I'm going to work on my regular job during the time I'm not supposed to be there. I don't need to be there. Mm. So I'm going to work on my computer, which causes other people to look at me and say, oh, I'll get my phone out and I'll start working on my stuff. So it's, again, it's a domino effect and all this time wasted because you know, I should have been able to look at the agenda and seen that I'm on at 930 and come in for my 15 minutes and then leave. Right. So relevant attendees, we also have people inviting their whole chain of command <laughs> to the meeting. Right. Like, did you really need all four of you to come to this? And I, from my experience and from, you know, looking at the, the literature, the more people you have in the room the less productive those meetings often can be. Yes. Now, oftentimes you do just need to have, there's a lot of people in the room because that's just the nature of of the organization. It's your staff team or whatever. Um, Well, it's really interesting. They did some uh, interesting research uh, at Microsoft. Um, There was was an article in the New York Times called- Is that an agency? Microsoft? Microsoft. Is that a small uh, startup or what is that? Don't don't diss our clients. Okay. Um, (laughs) There there was an article in the New York Times. You should check it out. It was called The Mystery of the Miserable Employee. And they actually looked into, you know, they looked at groups that had kind of low job satisfaction scores. Um, And they found a lot of really interesting correlations between those satisfaction scores and meetings, both with one-on-one meetings, groups that had regularly scheduled one-on-one meetings were actually rated, you know, had higher satisfaction scores, but we're not talking about one-on-one meetings today, just an interesting fun fact. Mm -hmm. But they also looked at larger meetings and what really distinguished those teams with low satisfaction scores that those teams with low satisfaction scores would often have 10 or 20 you know, bodies around a conference room um, compared to those meetings that often had just two or three people kind of um, working on something, brainstorming. So again, the the amount of people you have can actually lead to satisfaction and, and a feeling of productivity in those meetings. Yeah. And, 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 and specifically on that, what I'm finding with clients is that it, it the smaller, the better. However, even a bigger meeting, as long as every person there is part of that process, you know what I mean? Like they're part of the decision making, they're, they're there to brainstorm, they're, they actually have a role that's a logical role as, as opposed to, you know, what sometimes, for example, we have executive team meetings and there's, I was just with a group last week. If an executive can't make it to their meeting, uh-huh. they, they invite a proxy. They, they invite one of their employees to fill in for them at the executive meeting, which doesn't make any sense. No. Now you have a person there who doesn't have decision-making authority, who doesn't know what's going on. So it's the idea of irrelevant p- attendees right. that can be the problem. Right. I think that's the, that's the factor there. It's not so much an uh, uh, issue of the numbers. It's an issue of typically when you have such high numbers in a meeting, there's a good chance that most of those people aren't really needing to be there or need to do anything. Yeah. yeah. And when we spin back into, when we circle back into this, we'll talk about how we use your outlook and how do you invite and who should be invited. So let's, let's go on. Another ingredient of, a, of, of effective and enjoyable and efficient meetings. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there needs to be, and, and we'll definitely get to this, some kind of code of conduct. And that's probably not the best term for it, but some agreement, right? Some common commitments. Like, like this is, this, these are the, this is how we're going to show up, right? We're going to, we're going to not be using our phone during the meeting, or we're going to, here's how to disagree and here's how not to disagree. And, you know, based some of those basic behaviors that if everybody in the, in the, in the organization or in that particular department could agree on this, it's, it's obviously it's going to make meetings so much better. Right. Code of con. Yeah. I like common it. commitments, that kind of thing. How about, um, this is more a result uh, of a meeting, but I would still say one of the ingredients is finishing a meeting with an action action plan. Yes, yeah. right. It's it's not really helpful. In fact, you should probably look in the mirror and say, "Do I really need to have this meeting if the result of it is not a not a some sort of action that people or a person needs to take?" Do I need to like literally look in a mirror to ask that? Question? Look in a mirror. Do I have to look, look at myself. Dear, yeah, go in the bathroom and talk to myself. And say, "Marry ten times." 
what? I don't know. Isn't that some sort of like sp- spooky thing? <laughs> See, Mary. T- yeah. Is tur- that, is turn off like- the lights. Look in oh, the mirror and say yeah. Mary ten that, times. I just remember movie. this was a, a movie or a game as a child. Oh. Never worked. <laughs> um, never Even you couldn't call up a demon no. that you're trying to do? Yeah. Just to All see right. if I could. But anyways, um, yeah, action plans. We, we, we're we meeting for a reason, and at the end of the reason... End of the meeting. and uh, End of the meeting, things should be getting done. Yeah. I, it, I don't love meetings that you could have emailed me, right? Yeah. And, and, and there, it's... Okay, side note. It's okay to have those occasional informational meetings, because there's something good about everyone being together hearing the information where you can ask questions. And so there's, that's, that's a good thing. And, and later we'll talk about emails, right? I don't want more emails. <laughs> we'll get, that'll be another day. Although I'd rather have emails and more meetings. Yeah, yeah, for sure. However, sometimes information doesn't really happen really well in emails. And so it was good if I was in the room to hear it. So side note, right? Uh-huh. But mo- you're, in general, I agree, right? Meetings need to have actions. Um, w- w- what we're hoping, and, and maybe I'm getting my, ahead of myself, but I'm going to jump in here. We advise that you end your meeting with what we call ABCD. And we'll talk about this later, but A stands for action items, B stands for by when and by whom, C stands for communication items, right? What are we going to communicate outside this meeting? And D stands for decisions. What did we decide? End your meeting with ABCD. That should be right there on your agenda. Right. One more I thought of. This is kind of out there, but and maybe this falls more under the facilitation skills. But a meeting that has a nice balance between focusing on finding solutions and inquiry. Yep. Right? They actually find that meetings that are focused too heavily on solutions can hurt you know, creativity and new ideas because everybody's coming in already expected to have you know, a solution in place rather than let's sit together and let's ask questions. Let's dig in. Let's bounce ideas around. Yes. Right? Yes. It's, 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 a, it's a manifestation of that whole, I hate this, hey, if you have a problem, I mean, don't come to me with a problem, right? What's the rest of that phrase? Come to me with a solution. Right. And, and a Which, side note, I don't like it when managers say that because the first part of that, que- that sentence is don't come to me. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, if you strip that away a little bit, it actually makes no sense. Yeah. Why do you have a manager? <laughs> why the hell do I have a manager if I can't come to you with a problem? Right. <laughs> well, don't come. Well, also, it's just a contradiction. Don't come to me with a problem. Come to me with a solution. Well, a solution to... <laughs> right. I ha- that's the reason why I need a solution. I don't I have, have a problem, problem if I have a solution. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, but the analogy here, it's the same idea, right? Come into a meeting. There's something, there's something really wonderful about permission in a meeting to explore the problem, mm-hmm. right? To really get into what the problem is. And sometimes we skip through that because, oh, I don't want to be negative or I don't want to waste time or let's just have a solution. Well, I don't even totally have my head around this problem. And we might get a lot of cool creativity going here mm-hmm. if we could really explore what's going on. On. Right. So I totally agree with you on that one, dude. I, I, and so c- uh, the balance between exploring the problem, solutions, and here's another balance in meetings, and this should be in the agenda, the balance between information and participation. Right. right? So small group time, we'll get to that, you know, how to, how to uh, elicit really good ideas, right. how to brainstorm, how to do consensus. Yeah. I mean, that's stuff should be happening in meetings because that's why we are in the same room at the same time is so we can do that kind of work together that you can't do over email. Yeah, exactly. Another thing is just, and this is more of the culture of the meeting, but still an ingredient is uh, kind of the safety to express ideas without consequence. Yep, more or less, right? I mean, obviously, there's, you know, use your common sense here. But, um, you know, I've seen cultures where, meeting cultures where it's so unfortunate because, you know, there's the either the leader or the facilitator or someone else in there that makes it kind of a really unsafe environment to do that, to throw out an idea and say, no, 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 that's not right. Or like, you know, oh, that's a stupid idea, yep. you know. I, it needs to be kind of a free s- space. Yeah, totally right. And and that means the freedom to disagree. Freedom to disagree. Uh, you know, Patrick Lencioni, I always say his Lenciani. name. Lenciani. Yeah, Pat- five, Lenciani. Patrick Lenciani, five dysfunctions of a team. One of the main dysfunctions he talks about is a group of people who can't disagree with each other. Right. And so there has to be the freedom and the permission, and there's not a cost to saying, I don't see it that way, right? Right. Otherwise, you get that group think, and you get the power differential, and you're all sit there, and you don't say anything, and then you'll make a stupid decision. and. Yeah, people tend to converge pretty quickly in meetings on, or, you know, around ideas and a the consensus. They all agree they, too, too easily. Or too easily. Right. And they find that actually even in, in, in healthy cu- cultures, yeah. it, it's just, it's called being a human being and, and getting into a group situation. We tend to converge. Uh, yeah. Side note here, um, Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel winning economist, 
Uh, he actually does some consulting with organizations, and he he recommends if you're coming to a, a meeting and you know you need to make a decision on something, that everybody writes down what they think should happen before the meeting starts, right? So they almost have an anchor of what they thought before, because oftentimes people will come to the meeting they hadn't thought about it yet, and they all converge into into one. Oh, opinion. you mean you mean come already with your solid before before the meeting. This is what I thought we should do. This is what yeah. I thought the decision we should make. Yeah. So we don't let go of that too early or too easily. Exactly. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, this is great. Um, let's keep let's keep listing right ingredients of effective and enjoyable meetings. What else, dude? How about just uh, a comfortable space, relatively, yep. and snacks? I don't necessarily mean, you know, kombucha on tap and beanbag chairs, but, you know, it, there's something about bonding over a nice croissant. A nice croissant. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, you know, this is, here's a piece we're not going to circle back to, so can we just stop yeah, on it for a second? It's, it out. We're not, we're not, we're not saying here, folks, that, you know, stop having meetings because you don't have a food budget. I mean, it's, this is not the thing that's going to make or break your meetings. However, the study that we love talking about, there's a, there was a college campus and there, there was uh, all these orientation meetings and they, there's hundreds of them. I mean, over a couple of years. Oh, yeah. So the social science department said, Hey, let's do a little study on this. And so what they did was they controlled for almost everything they could, right? They controlled for the, for the number of people in the room. The room itself was the same room. Uh, the presentation was exactly the same because it was a video, a video presentation. So they tried to control for all the things they could. All they changed was food. So there was three groups. One, a third of the groups had no food. A third of the groups had a little bit of food, like you know your your delicious croissant that you're talking about, and some coffee, maybe something like that. And then a third of the groups had a whole spread, like a buffet mm. table kind of thing. So these folks come in, do their thing, have their orientation meeting. And then the students are asked to rate the meeting. And the rating uh, sheets have maybe 10, 12 questions, but it's all about, well, here's the, here's the bottom line. The groups that had food, the meetings with food, the presentation was better, the presentation was more relevant, the room was more comfortable. Every single thing about that meeting was better. And nothing on that um, evaluation sheet had anything to do with food. Hmm. But everything was better. Now, why is that? What is it about having some food in a meeting that made everyone think they were having a better meeting than they were actually having? I don't know what it is, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. Right? Well, you just, I think people just feel better when they're uh, eating food. Yeah. Let's, well, let's count <laughs> them up. I don't know the science behind it, but... Well, let's talk about the physical part first. How about blood sugar? How about hunger? Sure. Right? There's sure. that. Yeah. How about breaking bread together with, with people? Right. There, there's something about our humanness that says, hey, I must be having fun mm. because we're sitting here together eating. Yeah. Right? yeah we're, we're good. And look at an evolutionary perspective. We're safe right now. Right. We're eating food. Right. We're getting our right. nutrients that we need to survive. Well, and right. there's a social, there's that social kind of, we're having a gathering because mm -hmm. we're eating together, which makes this meeting more fun. But there's also the fact that this agency that I work for spent some money on croissants for me. That's nice. That feels good, right? Yeah. Right. So again, you know, this is not the biggest thing in the world, but you know, if I, what I tell managers sometimes is, dude, if it, if it costs you 10 bucks to make people think they're having a better meeting <laughs> than they're having. Worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, we've covered a lot here with the ingredients. Anything else that we didn't really mention? Um, oh, here's one thing, a, a note taker. Yeah, um, note taker. Again, we don't need to circle back to this one. Let me just say, when you ha uh, note taking should not be a transcript. I don't, I don't need you to record every single thing people said in the meetings. And I've actually been to some meetings where I'm looking over there at the person who's keeping notes. They are furiously typing the entire time. They're not participating because they're so focused on their note keeping. It's like, I don't need that. And no one is really going to go back and read all that. You know what I need? I need a recap of the A, B, C, D, right? Action items, buy wins, communication items, and decisions. Boom. That's it. That's great. Yep. Well, we should get into that. Are you ready to get into A, B, C, D? Or? Oh, sure. I, I mean, let's, let's, I think it seems like a natural transition there. So, because you've, you've referred to it a couple times now that, you know, you want to finish a meeting with these three different elements, four different elements, A, B, C, D. Right. Um, so, uh, help me understand. Is this something that happens at the very end of the meeting or does it happen over the course of the meeting? Uh, kind of both, but it's, it, it's, it's parked at the end of the meeting. So, as we're talking about these ingredients, keep in mind that you're, we're in the background right now, we're also talking about your agenda, mm. right? So as we're talking about some of these meeting practices, we are talking about what that agenda should look like. And, and, and maybe before we get to ABCD, let's kind of 
uh, get the pull the lens back a little bit and say, you know, we've already talked about the fact that it really matters that you have a trained facilitator or a, mm-hmm. or a skilled facilitator. We'll we'll get to that later. the The agenda itself is going to be your most important tool because it's going to have on it, hopefully in a template kind of version, right? You can call it up on your computer. Well, there's our template. I just need to fill in the blanks. But on our template is going to have a whole bunch of things that are going to happen every single time. One of those being A, B, C, D at the end of the meeting. Now, here's the idea. A, B, C, D, when you get to it, it's either going to be redundant, which is great, but you're going to be recapping something that you've already said. Because you know what? I've seen people walk out of meetings where decisions had been made and not know that decisions had been made. Uh-huh. I've seen people walk out of meetings and miss their action items because they were said sometime during the meeting, but nobody recapped it at the end, right? So it's a redundant, purposeful redundancy at the end of the meeting where you go over these four things. Or if they're not redundant, we call those prompts. It's like, oh, there are some action items here that we really didn't, you know, specify. Let's do that right now. Or, boy, we spun around this decision and we didn't quite make it. Hmm. What if we just made it right here at the end of the meeting? You know, so, so either it's a prompt or it's a redundancy. Action items, that's the A, right? What, who's going to do what? Um, sometimes that's a group thing. Everybody's going to go reread the policies, um, everybody's going to do this, or hey, Sally's going to work on this piece of research, and you know, David's going to connect with the other department. So, action items that's A. Mm-hmm. B stands for by when and by whom, mm-hmm. which is always connected to the action item. So, who's doing this, and when is it going to get done by? Um, you remember our by wins podcast that mm-hmm. fits in right here, right? Same rules if you're going to miss your by win, you get back and renegotiate it, et cetera. Uh, the C stands for communication items, and this is pretty key. What did we discuss in this meeting that we need to communicate outside this meeting, and who is going to communicate that and when? So, for example, we're an executive team, and we've talked about these different things. We really need to make sure that our staff teams get this information. So I need the three of you, right, to get to your teams probably within the next week. Mm. And let's bullet point if we have to, right? What are we going to say? What's the message? And what do we not want to say, right? This piece right here, this isn't ready for public disclosure. <laughs> Let's not talk about this, right? Okay. And then D, it's the decisions. What did we decide today? And if we haven't quite made that decision, what are we going to do about that? Are we going to pick this up next time? Are we going to put in the parking lot? You know, et cetera. So that's the A, B, C, D. And I've seen, I'll just last thing I'll say about this. I've seen just that, organizations adding the A, B, C, D in kind of a reverse engineering way, cleaned up their meetings. Okay. Well, I, I think this piece is important. I think it's important here to, to linger here just for a second. So correct me if I'm wrong. Every meeting ends with these four elements, meaning every meeting ends with the action item. Mm-hmm. Every meeting ends with the buy win, mm-hmm. which kind of plays into the action mm-hmm. items. Every meeting ends with communication items. Right. What we're going to talk about outside this meeting. How we're going to communicate. Who's going to do it, when they're going to do it. it. Yep. Um, And then lastly, uh, ends with the decision. Reviewing what we decided today. Reviewing what they decided. Yeah. Every meeting. And when I say every meeting, yes, there's always exceptions. But in general, right, you have this regular monthly meeting, this regular weekly meeting, this project meeting. Don't walk out of the room until you've addressed all those those four things and they should be right there on the end of your agenda and what does that mean for the meeting that means that you don't if your meeting is supposed to end at 10 you don't go up till 10 and say okay shoot we need to review the a b c d right it comes down to probably getting back to the agenda leaving time last five to ten minutes of the meeting to make sure you have these covered yeah your agenda should literally say over on the right column the time that you're going to start and end each of those items. And so the ABCD has its own time. It says 1050, right? Or whatever, ABCD, right? That makes sense. Yeah. Well, then I think we talk a bit about the agenda then. Yeah, let's more so. So we have, uh, again, just to to review, you know, we, we talked about all the ingredients of a meeting and now we're kind of getting into each one with a little more detail. One of the first things that we talked about was the agenda and um, have an agenda ahead of time. Now, my first question to you on that is, what is the appropriate amount of time to, to give the agenda, right? Like how much lead time do you give? 
Yeah, that, that that's a. That, I mean, believe it or not, that's a that's an important and a big question. Let's let's talk about ideal versus just real life, right? Ideally, why do I want to get an agenda ahead of time? Let, oh, why? Yeah. Oh, why, well, why do I need of, this? Of course. Uh, okay. Well, so first off, you know what people know what to expect in the meeting. They know if they need to be there or not. In a lot of cases, um, they know what to think about ahead of time. They know what to mentally prepare for. I mean, there's a lot of obvious reasons why you need an agenda ahead of time. Yeah. Um, well, remember, and let's let's bring this back to. Have we talked about behavior styles? Uh, maybe for like five episodes. Yeah. <laughs> right. So remember the processors. Uh huh. Think to talk versus the expedients who talk to think. Right. Processors get disenfranchised in meetings all the time, and I'm actually a little passionate about this. And I'm not a processor, but I I feel for the processors because I have watched processors for years get shut down in meetings, not get their time in meetings uh, by the way the meeting is run. And again, we're going to be getting back to that at some point, but they're they're not getting their chance. And so part of that is because they show up at a meeting, and all of a sudden someone says, "All right, let's talk about." the pros and cons of this, you know, the 42nd Street project that we're working on over here, you know, blah, blah, blah. And you got your processors who now start processing. Right. And they don't even get a chance to, to speak for many reasons, partly because other people are using all the airtime, but they haven't processed yet. And so they get out of the meeting or they go home that night. And they're like, oh, they got all sorts of good stuff they could have said. Right. But they didn't have a chance. And that's partly because they didn't get a chance to process ahead of time. Yeah. So when I get a meeting agenda ahead of time, it can't say item three, business, discuss business. That doesn't right. tell me anything. Yeah. It needs to say, what are the pros and, you know, discuss the pros and cons of, you know, so that's, that's one of the reasons I want to get my agendas out to people ahead of time. So your processors have time to process. Right. Well, and I, I think that's, that's entirely true and important. But even if you put aside the different styles, right, even you put that aside, there's just something important about people knowing what to expect in the meeting, whether you are a processor or not. Like, yeah, no, you know what, maybe you need to come with documents in hand. Right. You wouldn't have known that ahead of time. Yeah. Like the or me- I've read something ahead of time. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, to me, and I keep, I hate to say that it seems obvious, but I think most people can look at saying, okay, have an agenda is just going to allow for better flow, better productivity within that meeting. You know, the only pushback I've heard to not have an agenda is, oh, we just want to flow. We want creativity. We want this and that. Okay, that's called a brainstorming session. Build it in. And you can build that in, <laughs> right? right? Exactly. Put it in the yeah. agenda. This is our free-flowing time that yeah. just kind of bounce ideas around and, and kind yep. of riff. Um, so, so let's get back to the agenda ahead of time, right? So, so here's real life now, right? Perfect world. The agenda comes out ahead of time. Your question was how much ahead of time. I, I don't have a great answer other than a, a, a day or two is fine. I, I think it's really unrealistic to expect people to have a, you know, to think ahead a week and know what you're going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. I just don't, I just have been around long enough to see that's not happening. A day, a couple days, but here's the real life. Let's say that doesn't happen. Let's say we get to a meeting and I'm the facilitator and I just haven't had time or what, for whatever reason I haven't done that. What's my, what's my next best thing I can do, right? Well, bring the agenda to the meeting and give people a couple minutes. And I know that's not the same as having, you know, a day of process time, but we've seen that alone help. Somebody, people get a chance to look through the agenda, know what we're going to be talking about, have time to get their head around that. And I've, I've seen situations where that doesn't even happen. So what's the next best thing? And I just saw this last week. We get to the meeting, the facilitator says, look, let's, before we get going, I'm going to write the agenda up here on the board. Let's take a minute and go through what we're going to be talking about. Even that helps people settle in and kind of get their head around where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. And I get that. I mean, that's being realistic. The reality of life and the workplace is you do at times need to be agile and, and, you know, be able to work off the cuff. And sometimes just agendas don't happen. Uh, you know, I, I would like to go as far as to say, though, that like, I think it's a sign if most meetings you're making the agenda on the spot or even making the agenda the morning of before the meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's especially if you're a whole bunch of people there with a whole bunch of kind of different styles and um, work responsibilities and things to, to plan around, like having like at least a couple day courtesy to say, this is what we are going to talk about and give people that much time to no, I agree. Uh, prepare. Yeah. Per- perfect world. And I agree. I wish we, and, and one of the things that will help us get there, of course, is having maybe fewer meetings. So I have more time sure. to get my job done. Yeah. <laughs> time to make agendas. Yeah. Yeah. I've just kind of seen it being used as an excuse of, you know, oh, we have an agenda and we always make it kind of on the spot. Yes. Uh, you know, we're just always so busy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, well, and actually to your point, I'm going to agree with you even more so. 
those last minute agendas, especially the ones you're making on the spot, I guarantee you they're not going to be, you know, here's how much time we're spending on this. Here's how much time we're spending on this here. You know, that's that they're not doing that at the last minute. They're just listing a bunch of stuff they want to talk about at that meeting, which is like not having an agenda. So, so that, that leads me to let's, let's just look at the agenda, right? So we've talked about, you know, they should maybe, well, they should not, maybe they should come out ahead of time when possible. They end with this ABCD. Why don't we just take a step back and look at an agenda? I like that idea. Kind of walk through an agenda. And there's a lot of different ways to do these. This is just some general basic concepts and ideas. So this is step-by-step when you send out an agenda, like what ingredients are supposed to be in that agenda? Yeah. And, and it, that, the agenda that you send out, the agenda that you're looking at during the meeting, it's kind of your guide as you're walking through this meeting. Mm. Again, and I, I know I said this twice, if you have a skilled facilitator and a really good agenda, you, you, you got 90% of it right there. You could have a really great meeting. Yeah. Right? Well. So uh, a lot of agendas start out with sort of a combination of if it's not a standing meeting, you might want to include a purpose or a goal, what we're doing today, what the, what, we're, what do you mean a standing meeting? Well, a standing no, meeting, no chairs. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, it's, it's my weekly staff meeting, okay. right? I don't necessarily have to tell you the purpose of that meeting because the agenda will tell you what the purpose is for that meeting. Cause we always meet. So we don't, it's not a meeting where we're having to say, well, today is a decision-making meeting or today is an information meeting. You don't need to say that if you have a regular meeting with your people. You mean in, in comparison to other meetings where there's kind of an overarching goal with it? Yeah. There's a lot of meetings where we're calling a meeting because we need to make a decision about X, Y, and Z. So, so tell me that at the top of the agenda, somewhere near the top, what are we doing? What's the goal? I don't need to do that for my standing regular, you know, staff. Meetings. Sure. But there still will be goals for those regular stand- no, staff there'll meetings. Be, there'll be things in the agenda that we're going to accomplish for sure, but you don't necessarily have to highlight the agenda with this is our goal for today. So my goal for today with my staff team is to meet with my staff team and get a lot of shit done. Sorry, get a lot of stuff done. <laughs> that's my goal. With the, that's sorry. Beep. That's the goal with the staff meeting. Um, another thing on the agenda is, um, again, depending on the kind of meeting, who needs to be there? Like, like, and this, there, what I've seen be super effective is you can have almost like in an email, you have the two and the CC. You can actually have a place on the agenda where these people are required. Like these are the people who are, let's say the decision makers, or they're the, they're the leaders of the project or they're, they're, they're on the team. Right. But you can also have a second line of invitees. Right. Like these are optional people. You and, and what we've seen in organizations, it's really cool. If I get one of those and I'm on the second line, I mean, I can be there. Um, they would they would like my opinion. You know, I, maybe it's informational for me. I don't have to be there. Sure. I can make a decision. Yeah. Now, let me let me play the devil's advocate just real quick with that one. The only issue I see with that piece, right, of, of having these required people, which, you know, hopefully those are people that legitimately need to be there. Mm-hmm. And then the CC of like, hey, you know, this is an option that I think that's great in a lot of ways. It's it's allowing it's kind of painting a picture that, hey, you, your your opinion is valued, although you don't need to be here, mm-hmm. We'd, you know, would like you there. There could be a, like this feeling of expectation with that, right? You get CC'd you know you're not required to be in the meeting and it's like i really don't want to be in that meeting but you know i got to play this game correctly like i i i should show up to these meetings i'm cc'd on right to show face to let people know i'm committed to let people know i'm dedicated so it might create this this kind of weird almost like corporate politics i i'll I, i'll tell you i i see that could be i've never seen it i in fact this what i've just described is like Every time they've instituted this, it's just been a huge relief because because the because the baseline problem is we're all going to meetings at times that we do not need to be at. And I, and because of what you just described is happening because we're all on the two line. Well, even though I know I don't really need to be here. Yeah, I'm expected to be there. I better be. You know, that's the problem. And I think this actually fixes that problem, especially when it's a corporate agreement, which would take care of what you just said, sure. where you say, look, we're doing this so you people can opt out and I want you to opt out if you know, you have something else you have to get done Sure. or if you don't really have an interest or whatever. Now, if I need you to be there, here's another thing. Um, we do need your opinion. Uh I'll let you know when that is. The agenda will say, right, right. Show up, you know, 15 minutes after the meeting starts. Come at 10, 15 and here's your, you know, so you can actually, a little, a little bit of work up front, right, to kind of parse this out. Mm-hmm. Who needs to be there? Who's invited, but they don't need to be there? Who's going to be the people that we need at certain times? That takes a little bit of time. But man, you could save hours 
in, 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 in the aggregate over time of mm -hmm. people's time if they knew when they needed to be at a meeting and not. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and I think what I was saying is, you know, I, it, it seems clear that to alleviate that problem of people feeling like they should probably be there to, you know, like I said, play the game right mm -hmm. and, and show face is expectations. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, trust me, I you really don't need to come to this unless you want to. I yes. want you to know you're invited. Yes. You know, I'm not going to hold anything against you. No demerits. Right. If you don't uh, come. If you don't come. It's not going to be a passive aggressive. Right. Well, you didn't it, need to be there, but you didn't come. This isn't a so, test. Right. I mean, yeah, fortunately, I have, I have friends that I talk to that they always feel like there's some sort of like test or trap that they're looking out for in the workplace oh, of ouch. like, yeah. well, they said I don't have to be there if I don't want to, but I feel like I'm going to lose some face if I yeah. don't. Yeah. So yeah. expectations, folks. That's all it is. Anyways. We won't get too hung up on that. Yeah. So it's the meeting invite, you know, mm -hmm. or who's on, who's, who needs to be there, who's invited. It's the purpose possibly. You get into the agenda now and, you know, just briefly a couple of thoughts. I really recommend that over on the right-hand column, you, you have the time spelled out. And I know that seems pretty obvious, but, you know, uh, without that, there's really no quote permission to say, okay, we're done with this item or, you know, let's move on. So I just think that it's going to help the air traffic controller to have, the times listed and it helps you plan a reasonable meeting because again you've seen too many meetings where there's you know 15 topics and and half of those just uh, require discussion so time yeah, let's back it up to time for each item on the agenda yes we, ha we haven't gone into those yeah on the, on, yet. Uh, on the right hand column each item has a specific time that we're going to start that piece gotcha so you know the the small group discussion is going to start at 10 15 okay so again let's back it up these are the ingredients to agenda. We have appropriate attendees mm -hmm. are invited. Mm -hmm. That's not really kind of part of the agenda, but that's kind of like the pre-agenda. Who's invited? Right? Well, I've seen agendas where it's right there. It's, right. it's okay. both. So yeah. write it out. Right. Um, next step to consider is everything that's on the agenda has kind of a time or has the time. Yep. Over how much right time call. is allotted to this subject? Yes. Or this topic. Yep. And then. What's next? Well, on that subject, just a side note, uh, consider having a timekeeper. If you, you got the times over there on the right, mm -hmm. consider you have somebody that's not the facilitator just because facilitation is a lot of moving parts. That person's job is to say to the facilitator, hey, we got a minute or whatever you've decided. We got two minutes left. And I like to actually set that up after the meeting started, right? We're already rolling, and I turn to Debbie, and I say, hey, Debbie, would you be the timekeeper? Hey, let me know. It's always Debbie with you. <laughs> Who's Debbie? I don't even know it. Well, actually, I had to, sorry, Debbie, if you're listening. I actually know. We all know Debbies. Come oh, on. Oh, wait. Three, okay. four. So maybe you just four, work with too many Debbies. Five. You've really, I, you really found a I, niche. I just thought of five Debbies. Wow. Um, no other event. Yeah. So, 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 uh, David, um, would you be the timekeeper and let me know when there's two minutes left now say that in the meeting, right? Because what you've just said to the entire group, we are going to stick to our agenda. I've just publicly said, Hey, let me know when there's two minutes left. Now, when I get told by David, Hey, you got two minutes left, then I can adjust and I can, you know, either finish up in two minutes or I can make an adjustment if I have to. Right. So other items, right? I, I don't know exactly the order of things, but um, you might want to do a quick icebreaker. Um, I don't think that needs to be on the agenda, but just as a side note, you know, might do an icebreaker. We'll talk well, about that later. It kind of has to be on the agenda if you're allocating time and people know how much the meeting is supposed to be. Yeah, some, you know. it's a little iffy for me. Sometimes we say, you know, um, you know, the meeting ends up, the, the first uh, meeting time, it actually says like 10.05 sometimes. And so you kind of use the first couple minutes to kind of mingle and maybe a quick icebreaker. That We'll, we'll get back to that. But yeah, uh, you might start your meeting with, um, after that, you might want to do information. I, 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 it's not a bad idea for the manager, the leader, to uh, spend some time, you know, hey, this is some stuff that's going on. You know, here's, I was at, I was at the exec meeting, right, last week, and here's some decisions that are being made. Here's a new policy that's coming out. You know, there, there, there's kind of this time that you sort of reserve for the leader to do his or her thing. So this is what we call the, the leader's report. Yeah. They're kind of being an information curator here. In, information, right? Information they got from their bosses or information they got from another department, you know. So again, these, these agenda items don't necessarily need to be in any particular order. Obviously, there'll be ones at the end that, yeah, that you yeah that yeah I, makes I, sense. I, obviously, if you do an icebreaker, it's near the front. Um, this this leader 
piece. Um, I, I'm noticing that it seems to work better near the front of the meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing near the front of the meeting you might do is let's uh, let's circle back, right? Let's a section on your meeting that is literally about following up on the stuff that we you know, talked about last time on the buy wins, right? On the action items, following up on on previous action items and unfinished business yep. from the prior meeting. Absolutely, this is kind of a follow up and review period. Yep. So yeah, you got you know potentially an icebreaker. You have you know this follow up and review from the previous meeting. You know, every, so everybody kind of gets their bearings. You have this you know leaders report where the leaders sharing what decisions are being mm-hmm, made. Mm-hmm. You know, um, uh, different things are going on, yep. stakeholder changes, whatever it may be, and then. I would imagine you kind of get into the meat of of it, right? What is this meeting? What do we need to get done and cover in this meeting? Yeah, so your next items are going to be the business stuff, right? So, for example, you might have an item on um, we're going to have a discussion on the you know the pros and cons of a certain decision, or we're going to have a, another item in that meeting might be uh, we're going to brainstorm. Um, a certain decision, right? We're going to solve a problem together, and I got to and again, we're going to talk about facilitation later, but creating a meeting where people have their skin in the game, right? Where there's time for discussion and we'll talk about brainstorming. Um, you're using different decision-making styles. Um, so these items on your agenda are listed out and you're not going to try to do too much in one meeting, right? Because if you're going to discuss the pros and cons of something or solve a problem that we're having with another department or whatever, that's going to take time. And you have to think that through. We need at least 20 minutes, you know, to discuss this and arrive at some kind of s- solution so you you know you don't have a whole bunch of these you have you you have a, you have a couple right of these these items that you're going to cover um probably later we'll talk about how employees and group members get their items onto the agenda but that's you know there might be some pieces there where you know again Debbie you know Debbie I do know Debbie Debbie and David had a couple things they wanted to talk about and that made the cut and their items are listed as well right sure so that's kind of the, again, the meat of the agenda, those, those different items mm-hmm. that you need to spend time on. Mm-hmm. Um, what else is on that agenda? Well, depending on your group, and you guys will decide this as a group, or, or you know, is this going to be part of your culture, you might want to have a quick round robin. You might want to have a quick FYI time. And that's where you know, the, the group members did not have to submit this item ahead of time for the agenda. But they're really quick FYIs. Let's just go around. You know, this might be, hey, you know, you know, our friend Debbie might say, hey, I'm going to be gone next week. So if you have a need in this one area, make sure you go to David instead. Okay. Um, you know, David might say, you know, hey, could everyone please remember to put the, the green forms in the right box? And so it's an FYI, quick circle around. What it's not is let's all take 10 minutes and bring up a new subject, right? Or let's tell everybody what we got done last week. I, those, those meetings kind of make me want to shoot myself in the head. So it's literally just each person might have a little bit of information to add to, to tell everybody. It's, it's, it's literally kind of FYIs. Now, if they really had a topic, right, I want to discuss how to solve this problem, that would have been something they would have submitted and it would have been an agenda item in and of itself. So these are just FYIs toward the end of the meeting. Make sure everybody gets their details, you know, kind of taken care of and sorted out. I see. Now, this might be that might not be relevant if you're in a if you set a meeting for to handle something specific. Right. 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 This is more of kind of what you were talking about, those standing meetings. Maybe it's your your biweekly meeting or whatever. Yeah. Build in that time where people can kind of share some information. Real quick. That's, yep. that's real quick that's yep. beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, that the meetings that we talk about a lot are, you know, the, the vast majority of the meetings that we're working with are these standing regular meetings. So you really do want to have that time for people to kind of get their kind of take care of their laundry or whatever you want to call it there at the end. Um, and then you're going to have ABCDs, right? That's that's built right in. You know, you're going to have some time at the end of the meeting to cover those. Uh-huh. There's a parking lot, which is just this place at the bottom of the agenda. And it's kind of, it's, it's cool to have that, right? So you're going to use your parking lot a couple different ways. Uh, for example, you're, you know, you're in the middle of item four, uh-huh. and you're discussing a certain thing and someone goes down a rabbit trail and they bring up this other thing that is relevant sort of, but you don't really need to discuss it right now. Hey, you know what? That's a really great topic. Let's write that in the parking lot. Meaning I'll, as the leader, I'll make sure that gets onto the agenda next time. Sure. The good old parking lot. Or we didn't finish something. That's another option for the parking lot. We, we, we didn't finish this, but we really can't afford to bump another thing on the agenda today. We have to get to these other things. So let's 
stop where we are and let's put a note in the parking lot. We'll pick this one up next time. I see. So is it implied with the, you know, the agenda items, right? The, the kind of the core of what this, you know, what's going to be covered in this meeting. I mean, is it implied that, you know, discussion, brainstorming, decision making are tied into each one of those? That's not a separate piece. Yeah. Um, when you, when you plan out your items, you, I think you said this earlier, which was really good. You kind of want to have a balance. So let's say item five is I was meeting with this other agency. I'm the boss, right? I've been meeting with this agency and I need to tell you a couple things about that. That might be an item and it's not really a discussion. It might not be a brainstorming time, but I'm going to tell you some stuff. I'm going to ask you if you have any questions. So there's an item, right? But the next item, yeah, you know, this is about brainstorming. We're going to solve a problem and I want you guys to kind of maybe even get into some small groups and talk about this a little bit Then we're going to get back together. So I just like the idea of sort of mixing into your meeting time for discussion and brainstorming so that it's not one of those meetings that you could have just emailed me. Right. Right. So, so you're actually making time for those things. They're built right in. And this is where I see the problem. I, I've seen this over and over again. You know, again, you know, item six, discuss, you know, whatever. And they've given it five minutes or there's 20 more things to come on the agenda. So they just don't give it the time. And then you get your people disenfranchised. You get people that are thinking to themselves, I'm not even going to say anything because, you know, we only have four minutes. Or you go into a big, long discussion with no end. And six things get bumped off your agenda, and now you're frustrated. So, so this piece here, this this agenda with the times and a good facilitator, man, it's the it's the ticket. I mean, it's what makes this work. I mean, you get as detailed as so you know, for instance, first agenda item, we're going to talk about whatever, whatever it could be. Uh, do you even break down how much time we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna spend discussing it, and then how much time we're gonna spend? With the decision making piece of it and how like it's just one yeah, it's kind just, of it's just one thing. One and again ball. and again what, what mitigates what you've just described is a really good fa- you know, facilitation skills, right? You as a facil- facilitator know this whole item has fifteen minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. So boy, we're gonna give this much time for brainstorming and I'm it's t- I think we're kinda done with that. Let's move into this. So it's not just the agenda. It's not gonna carry the whole weight for you, the whole load. It's gonna be the facilitator using your situational awareness and your adaptive skills and Mm -hmm. looking at that item and saying, okay, when is it time to move into decision-making? And, you know, we'll talk about this later. What kind of decision are we going to make? You know, am I just asking for input and I'm going to go make a decision later? Or are we actually making a decision right here today? And side note, um, a lot of agendas actually have on it which decision-making style we're going to use. It's right there on the agenda. Right. So this is a what's called a style three, which we'll get to someday. But, you know, I'm only asking for input. So we only need 10 minutes here. You're going to give me input. I'm going to make a decision later or it's a style five. No, we're going to actually make it to we're going to do a decision together called consensus right here today. It's really great when employees can or group members can see what kind of decision making style we're going to use sure. because employees just want to know, are, am I influencing or am I deciding? Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll talk about that. In, in the next episode a little bit more. Um, we need to wrap this one up. So just to review, remember, um, meeting agenda. Here's a suggestion. You start with maybe some sort of icebreaker or just kind of conversation time. Um, then And then you have some follow-up and review time, right? Following up on previous action items, unfinished business from prior meetings. Um, and then you have kind of the leader report, right? A chance to kind of be the information curator there, let people know what's going on within the, the inner workings of leadership. And then you kind of get into your agenda items. Make sure you build in time with those agenda items for you know discussion, brainstorming, decision-making, problem-solving, so on and so forth. And then maybe you have a time where it's kind of you know anything else. Great. Uh, F- people, FYIs. People get to throw out some FY- FYIs real quick. Um, obviously not a, not a opportunity for people to share things that can be shared over email or bring up whole new topics to discuss. Um, and then of course, I, I think most importantly, you end the meeting with the last five to 10 minutes. You spend time on the A, B, C, D, right? What are the action items? What are the by wins, right? You know, when do people need to get this stuff done by? Um, and then the C, what are, what are, what items need to be communicated, and then D, the decision. Yeah, what did we decide today? What did we decide today? Yep. And there's a parking lot. Um, there's time frames on yep. the right. 
And and I and I want to just make a quick suggestion. And we'll you know next episode we'll dig in more into some of these topics. But hey, it would be a really cool idea if every quarter or every half year you had an agenda item called our meetings, right? Let's, let's talk about our meetings. What's working? What's not? What would you like to see us do differently? Um, what could we improve? That, I think that's a really cool stop gap and a, or not a stop gap, but a really good quality control piece right there is give people a chance every so often to, to talk about how we do meetings. Absolutely. Well, next time we're going to be covering some more of the nuances with running meetings, including the facilitation and decision making, code of conduct, code of conduct, a lot of other important things here. So please tune in for that one. All right. Lastly, again, if you have um, topics you'd like to like for us to cover, uh, situations you're dealing with that you'd like to hear our opinion on, uh, shoot us an email contact at nashconsulting.com. And and I want to point out on that one, it'll be confidential, right? If you give us a a problem and you describe something, we won't use your name because we don't want that to come back and bite you someday. So we promise we'll be careful. We promise. All right. Until later. Happy meetings. Happy meetings. (laughs) 